In the previous lesson we had seen a uh, basic structure of RNN and also forward propagation through RNN. In this lesson we will see backward propagation through RNN and this is also called back propagation through time or in short BPTT. So let's start with the back uh, forward propagation. So this was the these were the steps for forward propagation. So we had a sequence of words x1, x2 all the way up to x, tx and uh, we calculated activations a1, a2, y1, y2 and so on. So for backward propagation uh, we do it the calculations in reverse order. So it should be the arrow should be going in opposite directions from right to left. So now let's start with the forward propagation and then we will see the back propagation. So uh, here we have initially a sequence of words x1, x2 all the way up to x, tx and we take these inputs and calculate activations a1 a2 a tx so you will uh, notice that we are working with examples where the size of input is same as the size of outputs so tx and ty are same but later we will see uh, all the different uh, RN models where this is not the case. And further we calculate y1 hat, y2 hat, y ty hat. And for calculating these activations, we need a set of parameters WA and BA. And we feed it, and these are shared across different words, different timestamps. And then for calculating Y, we need WY and BY, which we had already seen in the previous video. and these are also shared. And then for back propagation we need a notion of loss function. So we can define any loss function. Uh, so we will define uh, element wise loss function. Let's call it LT. So between the calculated y hat t and the expected y t. So here which loss function we use is uh, irrelevant for understanding the concepts. Let's, let's take a loss function which is uh, let's say square of difference between these two values expected and actual. Uh, but in, uh, it will depend on uh, the application uh, we, for uh, example uh, named entity recognition where it's zero or one thing. We can use binary cross entropy loss also but I am taking a simple loss function just for understanding the concepts and the complete loss function would be independent of this word which will be sum of all the individual losses. Now we have our loss function so we can use this calculated y to calculate loss function l1 l2 lty and using these we will sum all of these to calculate our final loss now we are ready to do the back progression step so in back propagation we uh, do the calculations in reverse order and then we update our parameters. 
so uh, in the beginning these parameters are WABA, WIBY these are different and ultimately we update them using gradient descent so we will uh, do the calculation in reverse order all the arrows will go in opposite direction so these arrows are going from right to left so we will carry out computations and then we will update these values using gradient descent so we uh, carry out uh, the uh, derivative with respect to these parameters so if you remember the uh, gradient descent so we have a parameter let's say a generic parameter I'm taking this will cover all the parameters w a b a w y b y so parameter p is updated as p minus dl upon d p so loss with respect to this parameter so uh, this is how we will update it using gradient descent so of, let's take an example let's say uh, we want to update uh, this uh, wy so what we will do we will calculate dl uh, let's take for one So uh, losses we are calculating using y. So first step will be a derivative of loss with respect to y, then y with respect to w y. Then we can use the chain rule. So we have this value, so we can update w y alpha some learning rate times this value and this is shared and you can do similar thing for other loss functions so now uh, why it's called back propagation through time so it seems that the most important update among these cal calculations are uh, this right to left calculations and uh, in the forward pass we are doing processing the words from left to right in the computation graph we are going from left to right in increasing timestamp 1 2 3 4 and in the back propagation we are going in reverse direction so we are going backward backward in time so that's why uh, we it's given uh, the name back propagation through time so in these cases we have been looking at uh, the RNNs with uh, s uh, equal number of input and output so the architecture was similar very simple uh, in the next lesson we will see uh, different RNN architectures that are possible uh, where input need not be same as the output size and there we can cover a wide range of applications.